it finally happened. After putting it all on hold in 2020, the Alan Peters Furniture Award became the Alan Peters Online Furniture Award. And this is it, Judgment Day. My name's Jeremy Brune, I'm the organiser and I'm also one of the judges, one of the four judges. And before the winners are announced, I'd like to thank my main promotional sponsor, The Woodworker Magazine, and the prize sponsors, Axminster Tools and Triton Tools. Without their support, this event just wouldn't have happened. And of course, a big thank you to all of you who have entered this prestigious annual award and keeping this important legacy alive. The virtual exhibition will follow and alongside the winners, uh, some of you who've entered will be invited to participate in the exhibition. Now, about the award and the person behind the award, Alan Peters was the foremost British furniture designer maker to a generation in the late 20th century with his roots in the arts and crafts tradition, having apprenticed to Edward Barnsley and alongside John Makepeace led the 1970s British craft furniture revival, paving the way for the designer maker revolution and the work of today. Now I was fortunate to know Alan as a professional friend and exhibited alongside him over several decades at major group shows. The thing about his work is the integrity of construction and his deep understanding of the material, and in particular timber movement. And although he never called himself an artist, he certainly made an art out of the craft, and some of his pieces have that timeless quality. But he was also a very modest maker, and his work was accessible to ordinary people, and it is this legacy that is important. So before the winners are announced, I'd just like to go briefly through the background of the award. It started in 2011 and was called the Alan Peters Award for Excellence, and it ran until 2018. And it was held at the Celebration of Craftsmanship and Design Exhibitions in Cheltenham each year. And the prize for the winners was to exhibit alongside leading British professionals, you know, some of the names in the field. And the standard of the winning pieces was very high. And with the bar now set, the award has broadened out to not just college graduates under 30 years of age, but anybody over the age of 18 who is a resident citizen of the British Isles. So enough from me. Let me now hand you over to Tegan Foley, editor of The Woodworker and Good Woodworking magazine, as she is going to announce the winners. So sit back and enjoy. So this is the moment we've all been waiting for. I have the red envelope here. So let's have a look inside. We're going to start with Commended, which, let's have a look. That is Philip Garner's Hajimi stool, so big congratulations to him. Uh, moving on to Highly Commended, uh, that's Thomas Eddles and his June Hall table. And let's have a look at the third. Uh, okay, this is Nick Newlands and his art chest. Big congratulations. Moving on to second, it's Aidan Donovan and his Wagger coffee table. And last but not least, in first place, we have Andrew Lapthorn and his remnant table. So a massive congratulations to Andrew for this amazing piece. Thank you, Tegan. Now let's turn to our first prize sponsor, Axminster Tools and Managing Director, Alan Stiles. So Axminster Tools are really pleased to be, to be involved in this award. You know, we are passionate about woodworking, selling and offering tools. We share our knowledge and learning with the industry so we continually evolve and improve. 
and help others improve. It's, it's, it's really pleasing to be in to be in the position we are to to offer the thousand pound gift voucher to the winner Andrew Lapthorne for his um, remnant table. I personally like the the natural form of of the of the piece, it, it, you know, and and the, it's it's really nice to see that the, the use of sustainable timber, which is which is a big challenge at the moment, but there's also there's also some you know endangered species in there, which is which is using reclaimed timber, which is which is fantastic, and it does showcase those fine old timbers that, that um, we used in the past. And you know, the piece itself is is something I'd I'd, I'd love to have in my house, and um, I think many others would. So it's it's, it's great to see. Thank you for your support, Alan. Now let's hear from our second prize sponsor, Triton Tools and Global Manager, Mark Pearson. Hi, Jeremy. I'm Mark Pearson. I'm the Global Brand Manager for Triton Tools. Here at Triton, we've always been passionate about working uh, with the woodworking community. Uh, we are woodworkers ourselves. Uh, and this is a fantastic award to be involved with, carrying forward the, the legacy of Alan Peters. Triton aims to create product for any woodworking tradesperson, maker or DIYer. We're a brand that provides excellent product to those that know how to use it and approachable expertise for those that want to learn. I'm delighted to award second place to uh, Aidan Donovan. Um, I love that he's used Elm. It's a great wood to work with and it looks fantastic. I like the blend of, of Japanese uh, traditional woodworking uh, and the application of fashionable splayed legs underneath. And I think the craftsmanship speaks for itself. Thank you, Mark, for your support. Now let's hear from the judges, starting with seasoned furniture designer maker, Andrew Lawton. Well, I found the judging far more difficult than I imagined it would be. The calibre of the entry was so high. We had a real job in picking the, the winners and the pieces that we chose, first, second and third, all combined or encapsulated the philosophy that Alan Peters had towards uh, furniture making, design, use of timber. And they all had that, that almost um, indefinable flair, something which set them apart from, from, from the average. And as I say, it was a difficult decision to make. And all the pieces, even the ones that didn't win, have some merit. So we, we must congratulate everybody who entered. Thank you, Andy. Now, you mentioned an important aspect of the award in echoing Alan Peters' ethos. So let me just clarify the judging criteria. We were considering craftsmanship, design, aesthetics, use of materials and originality. So... The piece that we chose for the £300 Judges Cash Award is by Nick Newlands and his art chest. I think it speaks for itself, but we loved it. So we've got Nick to talk about it a little later on. Now let's bring in one of the other judges, Hattie Speed. Hi there, I'm Hattie Speed and I was the guest judge this year, which was a real honour. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who entered and really well done. Um, I was really pleased to see that some women had entered their work this year and I hope that next year even more will choose to submit. I just want to highlight one of the pieces that didn't make it into the finalists this year but really stood out for me personally and that was the piece entered by Freddie Keane uh, which was a kit designed for uh, blind people or sight impaired people uh, to build a highly crafted piece of furniture, a three-legged stool. Thanks, Hattie. Now to our fourth judge, designer maker, David Barron. I'd like to mention the highly recommended and commended pieces. What I like about Thomas Edel's piece is the curved design of the legs, which give it a really strong stance. And I like the undulating front, which echoes the Cotswold Hills. And the commended piece by Philip Garner exemplifies Alan Peters' design. It only has five components, but they're really well put together, well executed. I think both these pieces are really worthy entries. OK, David, thank you. Now let's hear from the winners, starting with Andrew Lapform. A lot of the pieces uh, were offcuts that I've accumulated over, you know, the past 
40 years, I suppose, of my, of my, in my career as a cabinet maker. And then there are also some of the more exotic timbers that have come from old pieces of furniture that uh, have been left with me and we've sort of upcycled them. So it, it is mainly uh, representing commercial hardwoods for the last 40 years. In case you're wondering why I'm winking at you all the time, Jeremy, it's because I, I suffer from a hemifacial spasm of my right eye. So in effect, for the last 10 years, well, since it started up, I've been, I've been making furniture with one eye. Well, I had wondered, Andrew. Thanks for that. Hi, I'm Aidan Donovan. Um, I have been making furniture professionally for just over a year now. The award means a great deal to me. I mean, it's a prestigious award with a long heritage, um, and it's specifically a very British award. Um, I think to to have my name a, a, attached to the work of, of of Alan Peters and all the previous winners, it's um, it's a real honour. Yes. Yeah, so the table was not really typical of the kind of things I I normally make. It was really inspired by the conversation with the, the clients of the piece. Um, so our, our conversation kind of led us down a road with the, the Japanese influence from their recent trip to Japan, but also trying to explore this idea of contrast in the piece. And we chose to do that through uh, texture and, and form, you know, rather than, rather than colour and shape. And the idea is that there's a contrast between the hand-worked carving and the machine precision of the double sliding dovetail. Hi, I'm Nick Newlands and I'm delighted to be have, award, have been awarded the, uh, the third prize. I'm working down in Seaford in Sussex and uh, it's probably about uh, a year since I made that piece and it was, a, it was a long process but quite an enjoyable process to make. It wasn't a flash of uh, inspiration. It came over many hours of uh, deliberation and and thought. I think the, the most difficult part for the piece was the was the defining feature of the, the drawer fronts, and uh, it took a while to think that through. Uh, the drawer fronts have a, have a curved, a natural flow to them, and uh, the the process of oh. I don't know what happened there. We seem to have lost the connection. Oh, we're going to have to keep in suspense over that. All right, moving forward, uh, let's call on Thomas Eddles. Hi there, my name is Thomas Eddles. I entered two pieces into this award. Uh, so I'm really pleased that one of them was highly commended. So my table is combined influence of uh, traditional cabinetry skills uh, through exposed joinery, um, organic curves. And one of the most technically difficult and challenging parts of the piece was to bring the dovetailed multi corners together. And it proves you have to get it right first time. I'm largely self taught, but I studied for two years part time on a uh, furniture making course at Newark College. So one of the important things in designing this stool was to try and make it as accessible as possible for people to purchase. So there is some work to be done on the stool to speed up the processes involved in making it. In juggling with aesthetics and strength, I didn't want to put the tenons all the way through the top. So I used a router to cut blind mortises to ensure that the tenons were as long as possible in order to create maximum strength. Now, this is a jointing method that I use myself. In fact, I featured it in my 1989 router book. Of course, Phil's stool lends itself to batch production, which would bring the cost down further. Well, this pretty well wraps up the award. Uh, so in closing, let's just have a final word from Kelly Wakeley of Axminster Tools. First of all, I think it... The standard of the entrance this year was fantastic. Um, and I think it was great, actually, in the end, that the award moved online, because I know initially it was going to be a physical award, but moving it online opened it up 
to more people to be able to enter and also just showcase their work. Now, Kelly just mentioned that the award originally was to be a physical event. And part of that, uh, part of the prize, was for winners to exhibit alongside Alan Peters' work at the Wilson Cheltenham Art Gallery and Museum. So I'm pleased to say that this is part of the virtual exhibition. Uh, so please do visit that on my website and on other platforms. One of the satisfactions for me as organiser is making this award as inclusive as possible. And we've had applications from as far afield as the Shetland Islands and relative newcomers sitting alongside experienced makers as winners. Well, it's a wonderful achievement. Well done and thank you, everybody. Wow, what can I say? Well, I have just one question to ask. What piece would you take home? I think for me, the piece that I would take home would be Philip Garner's stool. I really like simple yet clever furniture. Um, I love the juxtaposition of the curves and the straight lines. Um, I'd, re I'd really like that piece in my house. The piece I would take home would be Nick Nolan's art chest. Um, it particularly appeals to me because I'm a big fan of boxes and chests, and this one is a great example. I love the hand-cut dovetails and the sculpted handles. Mm -hmm.